Wow, these integrals are not gonna get any easier, are they? Integral from 0 to pi over 4 times x times this crazy product, this pi that's telling you the product, whereas sigma is telling you the sum. So remember, when you have sigma from i equals to, let me just use k since you're using k in this case, when you have k equals to 1 to 10 of k, remember how you're plugging values into k and you're adding them up all the way to plus 10, and this is 55. But the thing is, now we have capital pi, this is not lowercase pi, Lowercase pi is the one right here, which is ratio of circumference to the diameter of a circle, 3.14159 and so on. But whereas this capital pi, so this is lowercase, this pi is lowercase, but this is capital pi. Capital pi denotes a product, like sigma sign, like sigma sign denotes the sum. So sigma is the sum and the capital pi is the product. So if you have capital pi from k equals 1 to 10 of k, that's going to be 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, all the way to times 10. Okay, so we have this crazy product, and what's, what's even crazier is that you're going all the way to infinity. We're not stopping at some finite value like 10. You're going to go on and on and on indefinitely. And what's inside isn't any easier. You have cosine of x over 2 to the k's power. Oh my gosh. How do you attack this? Well, this x seems nice enough, but the thing inside is obviously what's making this question very crazy. This this product, this pi. So why don't we try to work with that? So let me rewrite this. So we have, let's focus on this part and see if we can simplify it. We have the product from k equals to 1, k equals to 1, to infinity of cosine of x over 2 to the k's power. Let's see if we can simplify this uh, a bit, if, if it's possible. So we have, let's plug in k equals to 1 into the expression. You have cosine of x over 2 to the first power, okay? Next, you have cosine of x to the, now k is 2, 2 to the second power. Then you have cosine of x over 2 to the cubed, 2 to the third power, cosine of x over 2 to the 4th, and you're going to do this infinitely many times. Okay. What do we do now? Well, this isn't really nice. You have a bunch of cosines being multiplied together. Huh, are there any patterns that we see? Well, nothing very explicit, but we, we have something going on. You have cosine of x over 2, then you have cosine of x over 4, then you have cosine of x over 8, then you have cosine of x over 16, and so on. So you're dividing by 2. The argument within the cosine function, you're getting, it's, it's getting divided by 2 each time. So you, this thing is getting divided by 2 each time. So maybe, you may think of, maybe we can apply half-angle formulas half-angle formulas, but if you know anything about half-angle formulas, you know they are very complex, and usually it's not easy to do anything with them. So half-angle formulas may not be the way to go, but let's try to look at this backwards. Going backwards, you have this multiplying by 2 relationship. You have cosine of x over 2 squared, multiply by 2, you're going to get cosine of x over 2, multiply 2 to cosine of x over 2 cubed, no, what's within the cosine function, not the entire thing, then you're going to get what's within, within the cosine function to the left, which is x over 2 squared. So you have this multiplying by 2 relationship of the expressions within the cosine functions. Okay, so maybe we can use double angle, and usually double angle formulas are easier to apply, and we can be more creative with them. So maybe double angle formulas all the way to go. But the double angle formula for cosine, which is cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x does not seem to really fit in. Because we don't have any cosine squared, we don't have any sine squared, it's really hard to implement this expression within this crazy expression we are given. But sine of 2x is easier. Sine of 2x, we have 2 times sine of x 
times cosine of x, and maybe we can do something with this. Because you have a bunch of things multiplied together to the right, as we have a bunch of cosines multiplied together, maybe we can relate these expressions somehow. Huh. Well, we don't have sine of 2x, we only have cosines, don't we? But the thing is, for this expression, sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x, I see cosine of x residing right here, and we have a bunch of cosines, cosine of x's, cosine of some expressions multiplied together, so why don't we write it like this? Why don't we say cosine of x is equal to sine of 2x? over 2 times sine of x. I'm just rearranging this expression to solve for cosine of x. I'm just dividing by 2 sine of x to cancel this out, and you're dividing by 2 sine of x. Okay, so we know cosine of x is equal to this expression, and we got idea to form this expression because you had this multiplying by 2 relationship going on inside the cosine function. So that's where we got, and now let's try to use this and maybe rewrite the original expression we're given. So we have cosine of x is equal to sine of 2x over 2 times sine of x. So let's try to rewrite this expression. So let's try to rewrite this expression right here. So we have cosine of x over 2, and we know cosine of something is going to be sine of 2 times the same thing divided by 2 times sine of that thing. So these two things are going to be the same, and you're going to multiply by 2 when you're going from this x to this 2x. So th this cosine of x over 2 is going to be sine of 2 times x over 2, sine of 2 times x over 2, divided by 2 times sine of simply simply what we had. So x over 2 to the first power, or just x over 2. I'm just applying this expression. Cosine of something is going to be sine of 2 times something, divided by 2 times sine of something. In our case, something is x over 2. And now let's go to cosine of x over 2 squared. That's going to be sine of 2 times this thing. So we have 2 times x over 2 squared, dividing by 2 times sine of the same thing, x over 2 squared, and this thing is going to go on. Let's do one more. You have sine of 2 times x over 2 cubed, over 2 times sine of x over 2 cubed, and you're going to do this infinitely many times. Okay, and do we have anything nice going on? And yes, we do. Do you guys see it? Let me simplify this just a bit so it's easier to see. So you have sine of 2 times x over 2 is just x, over 2 times sine of x over 2, times sine of 2 over 2 squared just gets you 1 half, so sine of x over 2, 2 times sine of x over 4, then you have sine of x over 4, over 2 times sine of x over 8, and you're doing this infinitely many times. And look at this. The sine of x over 2s are cancelling out, sine of x over 4s are cancelling out, and sine of x over 8s are going to cancel out, and it's going to go on infinitely many times. And you may say, oh my gosh, things are cancelling out. So wh what is this? How, how can we simplify this? What is this expression equal to? Well, the thing is, you have these two conflicting effects going on. You will have dividing by 2 each time, so you're dividing by 2 many, many, many times, so you may say, is this expression not going to approach 0? And the thing is, it doesn't have to be, because our argument, we have sine of x over 2, then you have sine of x over 4, then you have sine of x over 8. So for a given value of x, you have the sine of you have sine of x over, and the, the expression down below is getting very, very large. You have x over 2, x over 4, x over 8, and this expression is getting very large. So we're going to have sine of 0-ish at the end, which is simply 0. So down below, you have 2 times, 2 times, 2 times. So let me, let me write it like this. So you have sine of x up above, and you have a bunch of 2's multiplied together. 
so which is going to increase without bound and you have a bunch of sine of x over infinity which is going to approach zero so these two effects may cancel themselves out so we cannot make any predictions about what this expression is going to be yet because these two conflicting effects make it such that this thing may actually converge it may actually come out to be some nice expression instead of zero or infinity so how can we think about this well, going all the way to infinity is making this expression very hard to comprehend. So why don't we just go a finite amount of time? Let's stop a sign of 2 times x over 2 to the k power over 2 times sine of x over 2 to the k power. I'm just doing it k times. Instead of doing it infinitely many times, I'm just going to multiply this expression k times. Because when things are finite, it's easier for our brain to comprehend. Anyway, so these are cancelling out, these are cancelling out, these are cancelling out all the way to this diagonal pattern. This thing and this thing are going to cancel out. So at the end, we have, we have, you have sine of x, you have sine of x up above. And how many twos do you have? Well, you're multiplying k expressions, so you're going to have k twos or you're going to have 2 to the k's power down below. And what do we have? We have sine of x over 2 to the k. x over 2 to the k power. So that's when you have this finite amount of times, when you have it k times. But you want this k to approach infinity. You want to do this infinitely many times. So you want this k to increase without bound. So we can simply take limit as k is in approaching infinity to find the value of this expression. And how can we evaluate this? Well, realize the, for the limit, the variable we, are, we have to worry about is k. So sine of x is basically a constant with regard to k. With respect to k, sine of x is constant because it doesn't contain any expression in terms of k. So we can take that out. So you have limit as k approaching infinity of 1 over 2 to the k times sine of x over 2 to the k. And this is the part that we're struggling with because we're struggling with this because when you plug in infinity, when you apply direct substitution, you have 1 over 2 to the infinitely many powers times sine of x over 2 to the infinity power. And you're going to have 1 over infinity times sine of 0, which is 0. And these, this infinity and 0 are conflicting. So one way to do it is to try to attempt to apply L'Hopital, L'Hopital, L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule helps you evaluate limits when it's in the form positive or negative infinity over positive or negative infinity or 0 over 0. But in our case, we don't have neither of those. We have 1 over infinity times 0, which is not one of these forms that it has to be in for us to apply L'Hopital. But the thing is, we can force it to be in the form where we can by writing this like this. 1 over 2 to the k's power over sine of x over 2 to the k. This expression and this expression are the same thing, but now we have a significant difference. For this one, the expression got us 1 over infinity times 0. Now we have 1 over infinity over 0. We know sine of x over 2 to the k is going to be 0 when you plug infinity into it. And 1 over infinity is basically 0. So now we have 0 over 0 within this fraction. So now we can apply L'Hopital. So let's do it. And L'Hopital's rule tell you when you have limit as x approaches some some value, it can be infinity, and you have you have some expression, let's call it f of x, and you have another expression, g of x, and if f of x and g of x get you 0 over 0 or positive or negative infinity over positive or negative infinity, when you apply direct substitution, this entire limit you can also do f prime of x over g prime of x and the limit value is not going to change. And that's what's so powerful about L'Hopital. It helps you simplify the limit usually because usually f, f prime and g prime are more simplified than f and g. Or something about f prime and g prime are going to cancel out. And that's going to be in our case too because let's look at this. 
you have sine of x times limit as k approaches infinity, and you want to you want to differentiate both of these. You are not differentiating the entire quotient. Remember the quotient rule tells you derivative if my pen starts to work, derivative of f of x over g of x is g times f prime minus f g prime over g squared. That's not what we're doing here. You're just differentiating f, you're differentiating g and keeping them in the same place. You're not doing crazy quotient rule. That's what's different about L'Hopital compared to quotient rule. Make sure you guys do not confuse them. Anyway, you have 2 to the k minus negative k power right here and differentiating that gets us negative k 2 to the negative k minus 1 because you're differentiating with respect to k because you have k here you want to differentiate with respect to k not x and for sine of x over 2 to the k remember the k is k is the variable in our case that's going to be cosine of x over 2 to the k and now we gotta differentiate x over 2 to the k and multiply by that and differentiating x x over 2 to the k with respect to k, not with respect to x, is going to get us x, which is constant, and you gotta differentiate 1 over 2 to the k, which is simply the value we have up above, we already found that, times 2 to the negative k minus 1, and realize that these values are cancelling out. So we have, so we have, equals to sine of x, times limit as k approaches infinity of 1 over x times cosine of x over 2 to the k's power. And when k approaches infinity, you're going to have cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is 1. So the, that's simply going to be 1, and 1 over x is constant, so you can take that out. So we simply have sine of x over x. Beautiful. And that's telling us that's telling us this entire crazy product expression is equal to sine of x over x. So we know this integral simplifies extremely nicely to integral from 0 to pi over 4 of x times sine of x over x dx. You're simply integrating sine of x, which is negative cosine of x, from 0 to pi over 4, and we can do that quite easily. Negative cosine of pi over 4 minus negative cosine of 0, negative cosine of pi over 4 is negative square root of 2 over 2, cosine of 0 is 1, so you have plus 1, negative and negative makes positive. So we have our answer. Our answer to this question is negative square root of 2 over 2 plus 1. It's amazing how this entire product is simply sine of x over x.